Okafor, welcome back to Tech Chef Africa. Um, today I'm excited to be here. As you can see, we have a new knife for the first time, so you could imagine what we are coming to prepare today. Yeah, this show will always be Tech Chef Africa, and I'm your host, Nana Ifwa Beniel. Today's episode, we are going to have the CEO of iSpace Foundation, and we all know he goes by the name Josiah. Let's welcome Josiah Aysen on Tech Chef Africa today. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm okay. They, they I'm have okay. a, a yes. in there, yes. in the last. Yeah, we got that. Glad to be here. Yeah, welcome, welcome. It's been a while. The pressure. <laughs> Don't worry, we will definitely pass through this. How have you been? Not bad. How is COVID treating you? Um, it's teaching me a lot. Mm. It's teaching me a lot. And, mm. um, in a way, I kind of appreciate the time that we're in. Okay. Um, so, yeah, as a boy, it's good. All right, all right. Yeah, you know, it is not easy for you to get him, you know, to be on a show like this. And today, he's about to cook something different. I don't know what he's about to cook. So we are all gonna learn together. So before we dive into what Josiah is going to cook for us today, we will just go there and wash our hands. We'll be right back. Okay, great. So Josiah, your set yeah. is looking very colorful. That's one. Yeah, like my t-shirt. Like your t-shirt, <laughs> definitely. So yeah. Oh wow, I've not seen it though. Yeah. So. Before you go ahead and um, let us know what you're cooking for us, we believe that as a kitchen um, netiquette, we have to wear our apron first. Yeah. And today, surprisingly, Josiah brought me a new apron. So I'll just bring it so that you guys can have a look and if he also has something to say about it, definitely whilst we are wearing it, he can go ahead and let us know. So which one will you choose? Oh, this one matches with my dress yeah. color, so yeah, I see. This is so beautiful because it's got this. Uh, this is uh, one of the startups that I work with, right? Okay, and, um, she designed this thing to help, okay, pretty much kids and mothers in the kitchen, right? Okay, not only mothers, 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 too. <laughs> very important. So, yeah, the whole idea is it's got this. Mm. Thing at the back, so it makes it easier. easier. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to. Yeah. Tie. Tie. Yeah. Okay. 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 And it's got a crazy front. So if you're like me and you like your phones around, mm -hmm. you just, you know, <laughs> oh wow, yeah, wow, 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 wow. Yeah. This is good. My, my, Thank my you. Yeah, designing yeah. apron for the first time. Only on Tech Chef Africa. Yeah. No way. I'm telling no you. No way I'm at all. <laughs> so, Jason, what are you cooking for us today? So, today is going to be um, a missed bag of things, right? So, okay. I'm going to do a steak. Okay. And then with egg and vegetables and all that. And okay. With um, yam chips. Okay. I'll call it fries. Fries, yeah. 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 Brilliant. Um, so, yeah. So, it's going to be a mixed bag of things okay. um so we're gonna have your protein and your carbs and mm -hmm. vegetables and all that other stuff so all right great so let's just dive into the cooking what do you need first to um, get everything okay, so started? to get everything started i'm gonna start first by cutting this beef here okay right um mm -hmm. slice it like really and then i'm gonna season it so that okay. i leave it for a while okay right and then Start cutting the vegetables right. okay. and all those other stuff. So all I'm right. gonna start with this. With this, it's okay. wash first, so. Yeah, we we have we have. Let me just remove this knife so that Josiah can use his sharp knife. <laughs> all right. So um, whilst I help you with some little water, mm -hmm. just to know a little bit about your background, sure. the first thing we would want to know is tell us um, two things, no three things, people. People know about you, or people think about you. That one, um, one of them, you know that it is true, but the other two is false. Um. So that I'm very upfront. Okay. Right. Um, and they think that uh, I shave my hair because I want to shave my hair. Um, okay. And they think that I'm in my late twenties. Oh. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Late. Twenties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
So should I tell you which one is the true and which one is the false? Maybe I can guess. Okay. Then, for you being in your late twenties, I think that would be false. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm and so yeah, so I'm double over to things to proceed. No! <laughs> you know, you know that I thought you are in your late thirties. Uh, I was I was thinking of pattern nine. Uh -huh. yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. you're handsome. Thank you. you are cute, yeah. mommy. Your son is cute. Yeah. Okay, and the other two. Um, and the fact that they think I shaved my head, it's actually God is my father. So you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that one. That one, that one will be false too. Yeah, no, 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 it's true. It's what true. Yeah. Really? I lost my hair at the age of thirty-three. The stress of running a business. No joke. Wow. Yeah. We will come back to that. that one, yeah. We'll come back to that. And the first one was. The, um, that I'm brutally honest. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one. I'm brutally honest. That's um, true. Because I just believe the life is too serious to be dancing around with the issues. Mm -hmm. right? so, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. so we're gonna do one, two, three. three. Okay, so do you need any plates um, or something yeah, or a bowl? I'll get the plate. Okay. Kind of Alright, I don't need to do anything today. I'm just around the corner observing him yeah. to do everything. Alright. Well, Water. Tissue. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to be, I'm improvising. So, mm. don't worry. We wash the. It's always good to learn yeah. something new. Alright. So, in this case, Okay. Wow. So, with this, mm -hmm. I'm going to season it, right? Mm -hmm. But because I've got three different, um, well, I say five different um, spices. Spaces, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, I want to be adventurous, right? Okay. Two of them mm -hmm. will be seasoned independently okay. the other three mm -hmm. will jump all the oh, season see. together okay so that we right. can have different okay, so tastes when it hits you, you know right? so, this is looking promising yeah. already let me see okay That's, uh, all right yeah. so whilst you are seasoning your mm -hmm. meat we also want to know um two fun facts about you um i support manchester united Oh. Greatest team ever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what makes you think that Manchester United is the greatest team ever? Because all your big superstars always grew up wanting to play for Manchester United or Real Madrid. No other team, nobody else would say, I want to play for this team. Right? But they end up being in different teams. Yeah, because they couldn't get into our team. Jeez. So are you saying that? <laughs> It's hard to find, it's hard to, yeah. um, how do we call it, to yeah, gain opportunity, yeah. yeah, to play for Man U. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And what's the other fun fact? And the, um, I used to, mm -hmm. I used to rap, right? So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I used okay. to follow little, you know, record labels. Okay. Okay. Um, this was probably when I was in my 18, 20s, right? Mm -hmm. So we used to go around. Mm -hmm. and, Putting posters on there. So what you used to do, you get up at three o'clock in the mm -hmm. morning, right? Mm -hmm. Then about five minutes. And then we would mix glue. Glue, yeah, yeah. And then get the poster. So mm -hmm. one person will put the glue yeah. on the front. Yeah. So the oh, can can the yes. Now who my chill this idea the film from yeah. yeah. wow, I did that you know who would be yeah. Yeah. what can't be. Yeah. And it was swayed you. Oh, eh? oh, <laughs> oh. in J and then I say, it's gonna mm -hmm. make sure the police won't catch you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that that was London. Oh, Not even yeah. sorry no, to no. say. Hey, and they were chill and call that. What's the best show? I swear. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Um. So yeah. So those are two things. So, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use the pepper, um, lemon pepper. Right? Okay. And then rosemary. Okay. And um, to season this these two. two. Okay. And then the other rice. The rest will just be a blast. Of okay. Different. Uh, different taste, season. Right? So, okay. So basically. Mm -hmm. If you taste it and your taste buds go off, mm -hmm. so it's not my fault. It is not your yeah. fault. We've <laughs> been experimenting. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, um, 
I think the first, um, my next question would also be um, about your company, right. iSpace Foundation. By the way, Josiah is the grandfather, grandfather of the whole hubs here in Ghana. You know, I had a story from a common friend of ours and I was like, whoa. I was kind of shocked because I thought that there were some hubs before mm -hmm. iSpace. Right. So we had, when we first came in at 2013, mm -hmm. there was um, Habakra, which Habakra. then became Impact, Impact Hub, right? Yeah. Because um, we were the only ones in our area at that time. And then you had uh, Mobile Web Ghana. Ghana, yeah. And then um, Mest, which wasn't a hub because hub. it was like a, yeah. um, a school. Yeah, more school. Or less. Yes. Yeah. So those were the three main ones that were there we're at the there moment, at the right? moment. okay um but then so habakra and iSpace were yeah. the only two that two came the, out okay 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 kinda, okay um, shot off yeah kind of thing um and then since 2013 we've seen over like 50, 50 yeah yeah across yeah, the nation yeah, but yeah, yeah so yeah but in a way yeah we are the granddads comparing yeah. the experience mm. running the hub yeah. in 2013 and running the hub for the past five years, let's say from 2017 to 2021. Right. Weighing the difference of running your hub in these different, um, how do we call it, decades, right. right? How has the experience been like for you? And what do you think that way back in 2013 uh, makes running the hub more of like um, fun and entertaining than this current state or device versa? Right. I mean, it's a great question. When we, if you take the first instant, when we first came in, mm -hmm. honestly, we didn't know what we were doing, right? Wow. We were just operating on instinct. We were just natural entrepreneurial instinct, helping mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, and that was it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of experimentation mm -hmm. on programs to run for entrepreneurs. So okay. like iSpace, for example, because remember, back in those times, mm -hmm. make it sound like it was so many. Years. <laughs> yeah, um, it's been long. <laughs> exactly. It's been yeah. It was just more developers than they were business people. A oh, lot of developers, right? See, so they will come for events, mm -hmm. win the events, mm -hmm. but they won't do the product and then disappear. And then we'll go to another event, go and pitch, make money, and then disappear, yeah. Right? So then we decided no, we're just going to be different. We are mm -hmm. going to bring in structure business okay. structure around what the people do. Yeah. So hence we came up with programs like Cold School, okay. Unlock Series, and um, Pitch Zone, mm -hmm. and kind of wanted to shift the ecosystem in okay. a business way. Right? Okay. So okay. Okay. you might have a crazy idea, mm -hmm. but you have to wrap business around it, mm. right? So wow, that was the movement, right? So we were experimenting a lot. Mm. Then um, we started having the conversation around why we don't have enough women in tech, yeah. right? So yeah. then, around 2016, wow. came up with um, Unlocking Women mm -hmm. in Technology, right? So wow. that's when the pressure sure. of becoming organized mm -hmm. right, came in. So I would say in the beginning, we were just doing... You were just, <laughs> right? you were just running with and the waters. Yeah. 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 Just running. And then it got serious around 2016, 2017 mm. to where we are now. Yeah. Everybody now started asking questions like, okay, so how many people have been trained? Mm. And they can should be able to tell yeah, you that. yeah, and, you know, and start building team right? mm. because getting a team is very important. Mm. It's one of those things that as an entrepreneur, you cannot do by yourself. That's true. Right? So let me get you some salt. Yeah, you need, you need, you need it. Um, so yeah, so getting the team was one of the um, important things that you had to do. Yeah. It's one of the most important things that we had to do. Hey, no, so, I'm not so fetching. Yeah, no, no, I am not. I am not. So that if it doesn't go well, no, Jose, Jose, Jose doesn't come and say that. It's, it's exactly. my fault. But we're supposed to be a team. We no. are, we are, but currently, no, Jose, you are a chef. I no. leave that to you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, okay. so I think for me, that's what it is. Okay. Right? Um, All right. The whole essence of building a team, so mm -hmm. getting more structured. Mm -hmm. That's what the industry Street needed at that need. time. Okay. Um, and yeah, so that was the difference between when we first So started now iSpace is more structured than yeah. it used, used to be to, in yeah, 2013. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you come there now, you hardly see me getting involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the yeah. company. 
Um, so we've got Favor, who is the um, operations manager. She's Shout the, out uh, to Favor, my she's, girl. She's the one that runs the operations at the iSpace, and we've got an amazing team that do the day to day stuff. Okay. Yeah, so I'm okay. just. I would say I'm just a head coach. Really. Yeah, coach, yeah. and you know, getting some deal closed so yeah. that money can run yeah. into the car. Yeah. Oh, come there, Charlie. He get mad the door. By the time he leaves here, he has to put like something on the table so before he leaves. You know, you the vibe. So, um, All right. Where's my bin? Your bin. Yeah, you. this is your bin. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So I'll just cover you. this yeah. for you. And then, so I'm going to pour the eggs. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, funny enough, so. Yeah, let me just use an analogy, right? Okay. Real quick. So why are we doing it? Because since we're going to talk about it, we're going to okay. What are you, the egg or um, the I'll go for egg. You go for an egg. Yeah. Why? Because egg, egg, egg is kind of fragile. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in the sense that currently it has the shell, but inwardly it's kind of liquid as we speak right now. But after boiling it, mm -hmm. it turns out from the liquid state to the solid state. Mm -hmm. And that teaches me that kind of sometimes through your entrepreneurship journey, when you are starting, just as you were saying, in 2013, you were not organized, but now you are more organized. So once we get it cooked, meaning that we can cut it into any shape that we want to cut, we can use it for any other thing that we want to use it for. So I think that's why I'll go for it. That's an excellent thing. Right? Yeah. Right now, this mm -hmm. is harder than this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's just the external. Yeah. If you put both of them in water, in water. exactly the same value, yeah. boil it, yeah. one becomes Come softer, softer. One becomes harder. <laughs> yeah. So in life, don't think how, <laughs> how you're going to end, right? And that's what it yeah. is. Yeah, that's true. So the true. environment yeah. is what defines Fines. what we come out yeah. as, right? See, so, yeah. Yeah. so always be the egg. Right? Always I be got the, it! Always be the egg! I got it! I got it! Yeah! In a hard environment. So, yeah. All right. Girl, I'm smart. I'm smart. <laughs> so I got it. I'm going to boil the egg. Mm -hmm. um, so now I just need to get my... My... Um, okay. Let me get you something so that I can use it to boil the egg. Water. Um, I'll, I'll fetch yeah, uh, some here for you. Let me bring you your cover. Okay. The one thing about eggs that maybe you need, right? Mm -hmm. Is if you boil it, Mm -hmm. and you put salt in it. Mm -hmm. How did the salt even get into the shell? As in to get to the you white know, bit? I've, know I've, been, I've been thinking, yesterday, mm -hmm. I was actually thinking about, it's a, it's a conversation that I was having with right. someone yesterday. Mm -hmm. Let me just put it on yeah. fire. I don't know how our mothers do it. Yeah. I don't know how they do it, but maybe you have a secret that no. you, can, you can tell me. No, because whether it cracks or not, you mm -hmm. still taste the salt. So yeah, that's true. It amazes me how eggs do that but then hey that's why we're here yeah that's why we're here okay so so now we're going to season this we're going to let it sit for, sit a, bit. for a bit and okay. then boil the eggs okay right and let the egg kind of you know cook depending on how you you yeah. all right you like that's your fine. eggs it could be five minutes that one i leave it to you today minutes. you are the chef so that's today you are my chef and mm-hmm I'm going to cut the vegetables, right? I know a lot of people don't like eating vegetables and stuff, but vegetables are actually good for you. Yeah, right? um, very. This part of the process is going to happen. So, it's great. I'm going to cut the vegetables. So, we're going to do mm -hmm. like normal pepper. Okay. Not, it's not hot. So hot, you can yeah. Pepper, and then carrots. Okay. I'm going to get some garlic and okay. onions and mix. Okay. And then some tomatoes and stuff. Stuff. Right? So, what we're going right. to do is that we're then going to fry it mm -hmm. with this, this. press it on. Okay, um, unsalted butter. Yeah, okay. Just kind of fry it so it can go alongside the, uh, the chips and chips. all that. Okay. Um, with that said, I'm going to put the oil mm -hmm. in that all because right. the chips takes a long, long time, time for it to. All right, sure. You know, so, so, let me just get yeah. this fire yeah. set. Now, pre-corn, mm -hmm. so you can just taste something and then taste what the seasoning is. Seasoning is. Yeah, but now okay. that we are into Mm -hmm. And meat is one of those things you can eat raw, right? So, really? Yeah, don't be scared to be seen with meat raw. Why eat meat raw? Because it's like a lion. Mm. Lion's doing that. So you're a lion? Mm. Okay. So <laughs> okay. Okay, so I need more, a little bit more seasoning. Seasoning, okay. Do you want salt? Um, no, no, just no. 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 Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So. 
think your oil is is good. We just wait for it to heat up. So this can go in here. So now I'm gonna cut my so see the beauty about meat, right? Mm -hmm. Because usually when you cook with chicken, you have to be very careful. Um, so the knife that you use for your chicken, you can use the same knife that you use for everything else in your cooking, right? Any reason for that? Because chicken can poison you. Um, it's one of those white meat is very dangerous. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, don't go and eat um, chicken raw. Chicken raw. raw. You might die. We've um, learned something new. Yeah. yeah. Um, so usually what you do is, you know, like salmonella. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chicken can give mm -hmm. you that. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So yeah. in this case, but then with meat, you, you can. can play around. Okay. But I still clean it because of the environment. <laughs> okay. So we're going to cut our. And don't be don't be scared to try these things when they cook you. Alright. Right? And you can cook them raw as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. I'll join you quickly when I'm done with. Sorry. So the moment I'm just cutting the peppers and getting them ready. Let's see what I can help Josiah okay. with. Okay. You can actually um, do the onions. Onions for you. Alright, sure. So, based off what Josiah have um, told us about his experience in running iSpace Foundation at 2013 and now, we'll just dive straight into the question, um, actually the topic for today. Um, some mistakes that um, startup founders make when running their business and how to avoid them if you're already a founder or you are yet to be a founder, right? So Josiah, let's take it from the idea stage. Running iSpace or even starting iSpace in 2013, what were some of the mistakes that you made that right now as we are here, you would advise anyone? Definitely Josiah have actually mentored and coached over, if I'm not lying, 100 startups. Because from 2013 and now we are in 2021, um, eight years, it is not easy. Like, it is not easy to do something like that. And I know that he has experienced all the ins and outs of running a business. So, what were some of the mistakes that you made in the at the idea so stage? Yeah. Idea stage, I mean, that's where a lot of our mistakes are made, right? Mm -hmm. We get too emotionally attached to the idea, okay. right? And we figured that the, the problem mm -hmm. and the solution that we feel that we've identified mm -hmm. is actually a problem, right? Mm. And in reality, who is the problem and the solution for, right? Mm. We tend to create businesses around our own problems. So let's say somebody will get up and say, because I couldn't find an internet cafe in my area, mm -hmm. I'm going to launch an internet cafe, right? So basically, you launch the company for yourself. And then you're wondering why people are not people coming are not to coming. patronize you is because that was never their problem. problem. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you have an idea, the best thing to do is always do something that we call customer discovery, right? Okay. So you have to go outside and ask questions. Mm. It's, it's usually done in three stages, right? So, so the first one is the problem quest. You go out ask um, your demographic. So you always have to identify the people that you want to solve the so problem, the problem for. for. And usually when you talk to a startup, they'll tell you, oh, um, my target is anyone or everybody. In marketing, if you're marketing to everybody, mm -hmm. you're not marketing, marketing to, anyone, to anyone. Right? Yeah. So that's something that people have to remember. Okay. So you have to narrow down on the, your demographic, right? Okay. So it has to be as important as you have to be gender, your height, 
how much money they earn, their religion, all of those things. Really, how is much very, money? Very they... important. Okay. Because let's say you have a product that is hundred cities, right? Mm -hmm. But then you say you're targeting twenty-five to thirty-five year old. Great. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of twenty-five to thirty-five year old that cannot afford hundred cities. So yeah. when you're talking to them, you're wasting your time, right? So you have to ensure that you know that they earn more than a thousand cities. Yes. And even that, how much is your rent? Right? Hmm. How much money do they spend? So how much disposable income? It's not how much they earn. Mm. It's how much they have as disposable income, income. is what you have to focus on. Because okay. if I earn, let's say, 2,000 cities, but mm -hmm. at the end of the month, after I've taken care of my, you know, side chick, babies, yeah. everything. Side like, chick! Yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> you do all of that, yeah. you know, like, let's say, 50 cities left. Mm -hmm. You're selling me something that's 100 cities I can't afford it, mm. even though I'm earning 2,000. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah. then, if at the end of the month done all of that and I have 500 cities left, mm -hmm. even after my savings and everything, mm -hmm. I have 500 cities left, 100 cities to buy your product well, is easy. easy. So you target a person that is in the higher earning um, bracket, but mm -hmm. at the same time has potential of having a disposable income that at least is more than what is around 20% of what it is that you're selling. Them. Okay. Right, so it makes it easier for you to target them that way, and then talk to them, and hopefully they will just purchase uh, your product or service that you're trying to sell to them. Right, right. so that's one of the things. So we um, we don't identify our um, prospects mm -hmm. early or okay. enough, enough, right? And we get too emotionally attached, attached. to um, the idea. We don't do the research that we need to, right? Mm -hmm. So now that you've done the problem. You need to then offer the solution, right? So yeah. that's the problem solution. Yeah. Right? So you identify this the problem. Mm -hmm. Then you tell them this is the solution. Yeah. So you have to go back to the same people, people that you asked the question and say, the last time I spoke to you, this was the problem. And mm -hmm. we both agree. Yeah. Now this is the solution. Does it solve the problem? Right? So does it mean that in um searching for your targeted audience mm -hmm. or market niche? Mm -hmm. The people that you approach to ask the questions, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be just any random mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. who is working on the street. Sure. But you know, usually startups do that. We mm -hmm. just go to the market or mm -hmm. we go to the field. Anyone that we meet at all, we tend to ask them the question. Right. Because it all boils down to thinking that everybody is your customer. Wow. Right? Wow. But not everybody is your customer. customer. Not everybody is your customer. It's, um, and once you figure that out, mm -hmm. it will be easier for you, right? Because you need to know who the customer is, where you're going to find them, how are you going to talk to them, how much they earn. Because once I identify who my customer is, right, I know whether they earn. Because mo mostly when you talk to startups, they're, oh, I'm going to do a social media marketing. Okay. <laughs> social media marketing, which... That's the new norm now doing, everyone right? is doing, yeah. Because some of them might be on Facebook. Some of, my, um, some of them might be on Twitter. Yeah. Identify where your prospects are and target them from there, right? But for us, a lot of people just do any and any and everything. Mm. And that's mm. where the problem comes mm. in. And it's expensive. Not only yeah. is it expensive money-wise or resource-wise, but time and the emotions Shin, that go through yeah. Because if you approach the wrong people, you'll be rejected. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's true. And and it will, it will affect you your emotions, emotions because you yeah. get rejected you feel like the problem is you the problem is not it's you. you it's just you're targeting the wrong person so right from the idea mm -hmm. stage you have to use the right strategy right to acquire mm -hmm. your customers. customers right this so is really brilliant after you do that mm -hmm. then you do something called a problem or so that's a solution fit right mm -hmm. so um now we have to see if the solution fits yeah. the market mm -hmm. right now, if the solution fits the market, then, you know, 100%, you're good to go. Okay. But if the solution doesn't fit the market, you've got mm -hmm. a problem. So let's just say right now, I have um, a dream to then create electrical cars, right? Mm -hmm. Now, would that solution fit the Ghanaian market? Market. Right? Mm -hmm. If I then think yes, and I go and create... Um, electronic cars, mm -hmm. but yet the market doesn't respond to it, then what happens, right? You fail. Sure. Yeah. So even if your solution solves the problem for that demographic, mm -hmm. the question is that they fit into the market, right? And you have to then analyze your competitors and all of those kinds of stuff. And one of the best things to do 
is to create an MVP, which is the minimum, minimum viable, viable product. product right? yeah. So once you create that, you use that to test whether um, people will buy yeah, their exactly. thing, how much would it cost. They give you enough room for you to then make mistakes okay. to then remodel the, the product. What are some of the mistakes that you've seen lots of startup founders make when it comes to running the day-to-day -day activities of their business and even with the teams that they manage to as well? Um, naturally, startup founders are part of it, right? But, um, okay. We want to do everything, so we want to be involved in every single thing, mm -hmm. so decision making, execution, everything, mm -hmm. right? And it's a dangerous path to be on, and that's another mistake that I've seen. So the the CEO want to make all the decisions, the CTO want to make all the decisions, decisions. and everything else. Mm. And but you need to let go. You mm. need to have a team and train them to the point where they make decisions, right? So the only decision that you will really make is those critical decisions that will not collapse your company, mm -hmm. right? But any other decision, let them make those decisions because they need to run the company on a day-to-day -day basis anyway. Mm -hmm. A CEO should not really be involved in the running of a company day-to-day -day because the word CEO, which is Chief, Chief. Executive Officer, yeah. so you literally manage the executives. That's what mm -hmm. you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're the CEO, you're actually doing the day-to-day -day stuff, mm -hmm. that means you're failing. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So you Wow, I've never thought of it in that way. Wow. Yeah. That's why, I mean, even a job of a president mm -hmm. is to just literally manage, manage the people. So the ministers and everybody does the work, and the president then reports to the stakeholders, which are the city. Right? Mm -hmm. But then if you involve the president in the day to day running of the yeah. country, then that's yeah. what yeah. Be done. Yeah. So it's yeah. exactly the yeah. same thing with yeah. the business. So yeah. imagine if you are coming to your office and I have a meeting with you, but then you have to be the one that's answering the call. You have to yeah. be the one teaching them. Yeah, Nothing it doesn't be yet. Right, See, so your role is to just manage the executive. That's okay. what you're doing okay. as a CEO. Okay. So I think that's a lot of the mistakes that um, the founders tend to make. Mm. Um, and sometimes it can be critical. Mm -hmm. um, and most times, if you're lucky enough to never go back, then you can survive. But <laughs> if you get yourself involved in every single decision, mm -hmm. you might go wrong. Okay. So that's a lot of the mistakes that they kind of uh, make. And then they don't invest in their team, right? So getting your team to like train. So there's this mm -hmm. saying that one time a uh, CFO mm -hmm. asked the CEO that we're training all of these staff, putting money into the staff and, you know, teaching them all the training and everything that we're supposed to do. Yeah. What if, well, what if they leave? That's, that was actually my next right? question. And then the CEO said, well, what if they stay? Because if I don't train you and you stay, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. worse to mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. than me yeah. training you yeah. and you leave. Yeah. Yeah. Because they yeah. can stay with you for the next 20 years before they leave. So you have to train them until they leave. Mm -hmm. Right? See, so it's almost like um, being a parent. You mm. bring up your children, yeah. knowing that one day they will leave. Oh, that's how you have to train them to leave. So you give them enough training for them to leave. That's not to say you encourage people to leave. Mm. It's just <laughs> to ensure that you train, train them irrespective of what happens. Okay. Then you need to kind of manage to keep a certain core of your team together at all, all times, time. right? Um, that is the most important thing. So you have to train your team. Mm -hmm. Give them the opportunity, whether it's traveling, whether it's going on stage to pitch. They okay. might not be ready, Yeah. but just put them online anyway, okay. right? Wow. Be the coach, don't right. catch them when they fall. Because right? mm. mm. when you keep telling somebody, oh, you're not ready, you're not ready, yeah. the only time you're going to know the person's not ready is if you put them up. Yes. Right? And yes. if they go up there and they crash and burn, they will know they're not ready. Mm. You will know the mistakes that they made. Yeah. So you can then correct them. Even if mm -hmm. they are not with your company anymore, what Sometimes happens? they can always call you back because remember, it's a relationship. Life is about relationships. And you know the saying that don't burn your bridges? Yeah. A lot of people that have noticed in our startup ecosystem tend to burn but bridges. 100%. Right? Yeah. So when they go, they can't, <laughs> can't come, back. come back. And that is the problem. But then what we've done is we tend to blame the leaders all the time, but really it isn't the leaders. It's actually the people 
right? Why? 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 Why do you think that it's the people but because not the leaders? The thing is this: a leader has a bigger vision mm. of how. Okay, so even for what you do, with, yeah, um, tech shape you know, Africa. Tech shape Africa. Yeah. You have a huge vision right, yeah. of where you want it to go. Yes. Right? Good. Yes. You want to win awards, states, you're going to do this and all that crazy Amen. stuff. Amen. No. Yes. Right? Amen. So you have that vision. <laughs> yeah. But your team, from the makeup to the camera person yeah. to the editor, they yeah. only see, see their narrow vision of your yeah. bigger vision. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they are also making plans in their little space, mm. which excludes your plan. When you make plans, including them, every yeah. single time. Yeah. So yeah. when they yeah. come yeah. to work, yeah. they yeah. expect yeah. you to be like, oh, how are you? Have mm. you eaten? Meanwhile, nobody cares if well, you, you have eaten. eaten. <laughs> That's true. You see me? Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. When you don't know the dreams of your team, mm -hmm. if they decide to leave, you cannot be blamed for it. Right? Mm -hmm. Particularly if they were honest with you and told you, listen, I feel like I'm not growing in this company. I need help. Mm -hmm. If they mm -hmm. were honest with you and didn't do anything about it, mm -hmm. then that's your fault. Oh. But okay. if no one tell you anything, you ask them, are you okay? Yeah. Are you happy? <laughs> yeah. You may say, and then next you know, boom, they've got a job somewhere else and then they yeah. gone. You cannot be blamed for it. Hmm. Right? And that is the thing. So speaking of that, then it means that mm -hmm. aside that we coaching our mm -hmm. team, giving them all the mentorship, right. we also have to have this kind of cordial relationship with them outside work to make sure that oh yeah because oh, yeah. you know usually people who are working with organizations mm -hmm. tend to leave and i know that definitely before we start working they give us contract to sign and in the contract they state that make sure that you give let's say 15 days or 30 no, days no. notice before you leave but here in ghana for mm -hmm. what i've seen yeah. employees we tend not to do that yeah. we just leave Right. when we get new opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From where you sit, mm -hmm. is it that one, maybe the founders are doing something wrong, that is why the subordinate employees tend not to give this not uh, notification before they just leave? Or you think that it's a culture that we're growing up because usually you live with your mother, you want to leave, you don't know how to tell her. By the time that they realize, boom, mm -hmm. Chrissy Kwame is not at home mm -hmm. anymore. So from where you sit, Right now, what kind of advice would you give to any subordinate, which is an employee who is watching right now, and also any founder who is watching right now, that particular hierarchy thing that has to do with an employee leaving or moving to another stage of their life within the work, what advice do you have for the two of us? Yeah. I mean, you've answered the question. I know. <laughs> but the beauty about it is what you said is true. It's a cultural thing, mm. right? It's a cultural thing. We we in an environment where we lack responsibility and accountability for what we do. Yeah. We want to blame somebody else. Yeah. A person's behavior should not be a result of your behavior, right? Okay. So if I sign a contract with you that says that if I need to leave you, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you 15 days notice, mm -hmm. right? I don't care what you do. I would ensure that I live up to my end of the contract. Okay. Right? Okay. So I'm not going to say, well, because he walked in and didn't give me watches, so I quit without telling him. <laughs> right? No. Yeah. Stick to your end of the contract. And this is what we talk about burning bridges. Bridges. Right? Because once you stick to your end of the contract, mm -hmm. if the time comes and you leave, mm -hmm. you can always come, come back, back and talk to the person. Right? Mm -hmm. You can always. So I'm going to remove this. Okay, let me and get you Coranda. Yeah. But you can always come back. Right? You can always, always, always come back. So I need to pour this water in. Okay. And then, um, otherwise, we'll get some out. I'll, I'll get you something. I'll get you something. All right. There we go. All right. As we say, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. And then we'll Right? So you have to do that, right? Okay. Now, what I keep telling you people is do not mistake the relationship mm -hmm. that you have with your boss mm -hmm. as a friendship. Right? Mm. Because once you do that, you will know that you're not supposed to cross certain lines. Just because I eat with you, mm -hmm. just because I talk to you, mm -hmm. just because I hang out with you and all those other stuff, ultimately I'm still your, your boss. boss. 
right? Show respect. It's mm -hmm. like your father. Mm -hmm. You say, hi, dad. Oh, yeah. you joke with that. Because in England, my kids call me by my first name, right? Mm. But in Ghana, they'll look at you like, what, huh? <laughs> but it's very normal. Just because you call me by my yeah. first name, that means mm. you'll be disrespectful. Yeah. But in our culture, because we have that relationship, I've noticed that for me, mm -hmm. staff in the you know, past employee, mm -hmm. I was so you know friendly, friendly with them and everything else. Yeah. And people then become disrespectful. Right? So, yeah. So then it forces you to then want to change as a person mm -hmm. because you think to yourself, well, I don't want to be disrespectful anymore. Yeah. So I am not going to be cool with people. So remember that your behavior also alters the other person's That's behavior. His behavior. You see what I mean? Yeah. So just because your boss is friendly and jovial with you doesn't mean that you are the same, same. Page. Uh, page or level or yeah. whatever the case may be, right? And that's something that you know our people have to understand. Because and for the bosses as well, don't go into the office mm -hmm. thinking you know more than your, your subordinates, right? yeah. Exactly. Because you employ them for the reason. You employ yeah. them because they know what they're yeah. going to do. Yeah. So don't always play that I'm the boss for the subordinate mm -hmm. role. Mm -hmm. Play a coaching role. Play a mentoring role. Play a father figure. A, a bigger brother mm -hmm. rather than a boss. Okay. Right? Because you're there literally to guide them. Mm -hmm. Right? To do the right thing. With you said that it is supposed to be. So your role is to ensure that they know at all times what the right thing was supposed to be. This right? can also help you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What the um, right thing is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So maintaining that relationship is important, but know when to act as a boss Those. and when you can be the brother. Okay. Right? Last question for Josiah. We've talked about the idea stage, we've talked about operations and team management. And the last thing would be founders versus investors. Hmm. Who is the king actually? Is it the founder or the investor? The customer. Oh, the, the customer is the king, I know. But when it comes to these two heads, who is actually the main king? It depends. Hmm on the relationship that you have, right? Okay. So if you have a great product, then you, the founder, becomes the king, okay. right? But if you have a mediocre product and you need to rely on the resources or the, I would say, you need to leverage on the investor, Stuff. then that person becomes the king. Okay. See, so it depends on what that dynamic that mm. relationship is, mm. right? Yeah. But for me, everything you do with the customer is the king. Is the king. That's true. That's true. And to our question, definitely, since we are talking about mistakes, from where you sit, definitely you've invested in startups before. You've coached them. You've um, aligned them to um, kind of tangible resources that has also helped their business scale up from one set to the other. What do you think, what mistakes do you think that startup, startup, sorry, startup founders make when they are seeking out for grants or money from investors uh, that they need to stop? They need to stop lying, right? They really need to stop lying because what happens is they tell you, oh, um, I have a market share of, you know, 10 million people. You don't, mm. right? See, so once you do that, the investor is making the investment based on the data that you've given them, right? But here's the thing. When you overpromise, mm -hmm you will be under pressure to deliver, mm. right? And so when you then go and say, oh, the market size is 10 million people, mm -hmm. that means that I have access to 10 million customers, yeah. so because of that, I need you to give me a million. First of all, you've not even, how did you even value your company? your company? You don't have one customer, you don't have a product on the market, and you say your company is worth one million. Yeah. That in itself is a lie, it's mm. a joke, it's mm. just irritating. Mm. So let us not even talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> and then to the point where the person is giving you money, do not lie. Be upfront. And there's so many ways that you can, you know, quantify, quantify that. that. So the market size mm -hmm. and the market share are two different things. Okay. Right? So if we say the uh, smartphone's market size in Ghana, right, mm -hmm. is 10 million, million people. people. But the market share for 
iPhones is two million. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? See, so that means that we have 10 million, million phones, phones in Ghana. Yeah. 10 yeah. million people with I mean, smartphones, smartphones in Ghana. Yeah. That is not the question. How many of them have iPhones? They will narrow down to 2 million, mm. right? So if you even live in Accra, yeah. how many of those 2 million are based in Accra? Accra. Then you narrow down. Then you got, let's say, 200,000. Mm -hmm. So if your area is Spintex, how many of those people are in Spintex? You narrow down, Whoa. that's 200,000. So your market share is actually what? Those 2,000. Because that's what yeah. you're operating for. But well, you if you think that it's 10 million. And that's the... Right? So then when you release an app, they say, oh, yeah, there's 10 million iPhone, I mean, smartphone users in Ghana, so I release an app. And then, yeah, release the app now. Right? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, boom, only 2 million people downloaded it or might even hear of it, right? Yeah. Because only 2 million people can use it. Mm. Now that 2 million people, how many of them really have money to download your app? Right? So you need to break it down. And if it's an app that let's say is for food delivery mm -hmm. and your only location is in Spintex, yeah. that's only means that 20,000 people are gonna download it. Yeah. But you went and told somebody that you have a market share of 10 million. Yeah. So now the person comes back and like, okay, so how come only have 200 people that used the app in the last month? What's happening here? That's where the pressure comes in. Mm. Right? So stop lying. Line. Be transparent right from the beginning. And then what you need to do and say, the market size is this. Our market share is this. However, if you give me the money, we are going to increase that market share by 10% in six months, 20% in that. So then there is a reason why you're taking the money to grow. Right? Mm -hmm. But don't tell me I've been one. Well, after I give you the money, now I'm telling you from this camera. I'm gonna, I, 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 I catch on it. Mm. Okay. Mm. Don't lie. It's not necessary. Lying is not necessary. Be honest with yourself and with your investor. And do not always take money from any investor, right? Okay. Take money from a person that wants to help you grow. grow. A person that wants to literally help you grow. They will be their mentor and everything else. Because if it's just to give you the money and come back and mm -hmm. take the money, they will mm -hmm. also just go to a loan shark. Yeah. 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 See, just go yeah. to a loan shark. But if you want an investor, the word invest is the word here. The key word that you need to look at is invest. And what does that mean? It's time, time. resources, care. It's like planting something. Yeah. You have to invest time. time. You know, put water in it, yeah. grow it. You can't just have somebody that say, oh, here's the soil, I'm gone. No, the person has to know the composition of the mm -hmm. soil. They have to be able to indicate yeah. you when the time comes. So you need an investor that understands the market and also understands your yeah. type of sector that they're investing in right and they can also link you with other people so it means that in investor is not just an individual who invests just money, money. Mm -hmm. they can invest but we always mistake that yeah right because you see the natural entrepreneur mm -hmm. is two things okay arrogant and fearful okay right so they mask off the fear mm -hmm. with arrogance so I just need your money because I can do the rest. Yeah. But in reality, you don't know the rest. Yeah, you can't do everything. Exactly. Because the irony is if you knew how to do the rest, you would need the money. Yeah. Do you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. If you know how to do the rest, yeah. you would not need the money. So that's why you needed the money so you can go hire the other people mm -hmm. to do the rest. Mm -hmm. So go with an investor. Let's say if you need hundred thousand dollars, right? Break the hundred thousand dollars into cash, resources, and influence. Okay. Right. Cash, resources, resources and, influence, and influence. Right. So you can actually tell somebody, "I need hundred thousand, but just have to break it up. The hundred thousand, fifty thousand can be cash. Okay. Right. Thirty thousand can be your time that you spend with me that makes the company grow, and then the rest of twenty is the people that you can link me up with. That's the influence. Ooh. So technically speaking, you've invested hundred thousand mm -hmm. into my business, but this is how it's broken down, right? So the right investor would then give you that fifty k, mm -hmm. but they know that they need to invest their time to help you grow and also introduce you to the right people, people. that will help your business grow. So therefore, it's a win-win to them because Whoa. I'm, you know, I've mentored a yeah. great um, CEO. Yeah. I've introduced them to great market. Mm -hmm. I make money back. 
gosh, fire in this room, right. yeah. But that's how we yeah. do But usually okay. we, we, we want to align ourselves with some investor because they're famous, Same. the hand. He gives you money, say he's gone. Mm -hmm. Now he calls you back a year later and goes, I want my dividends and you're there stuck there like a tap right that, 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 that. <laughs> you don't know what happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So this you can tell that. And Sometimes, so they yeah. decide that, well, I'm never going to do. And then introduce me to this person. Person. Okay. And you know, so he's got. All right. All right. All right. Jose, I thank you. Maybe a word, you know. Yeah. Or the NDD. Okay. But mommy, you need a wrap. Oh. Into before I was seven, my mama came in and I bought you a maid DD. Mm-hmm. But your, she came running with mom. Yeah, my beats and yeah, my wallet. Mini beats. Can I say? Yeah, but try. Okay. Into maybe you are going freestyle. Okay, know? freestyle. So you just say anything that comes to your mind okay. and then try to put the words together. Okay. And you just freestyle. So anything. Okay. All right. I used to rap a long time ago. I don't okay. do that as much anymore. So All right. forgive me. Right? Okay. So. Ready? Yeah. Okay. I am. So I'm a child of ISIS. Okay. So you cannot fool me because I know what the price is. Mm -hmm. You want to treat me like Christ, but that's like a critical thing for you put me on the cross. Hell no. Do you know mm -hmm. what I said? Christ. Christ. On the cross. On the cross. So that means you crucified Christ, Christ. on the cross. <laughs> right? Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's play this game. I'm not Moses. Mm -hmm. I'm a spiritual one too. But before I do that, I will walk on water and tell you, you're not as real as you claim to be. This, this thing, they all oh. gangster until you put the muzzle in their mouth. Yeah. They all start to what? Oh. Stutter. They think they're all hard. Mm -hmm. But I asked the nigga, what happened to you? And my girlfriend gave me a birthday card. Oh! Soft like biscuits in okay. water. Right? I swear to God, if I came through here, I will slaughter. Mm -hmm. But like, what? what, what who said that? Biggie said, mm -hmm. I waved the 4-4 mm -hmm. before I opened the door. Mm -hmm. Don't say sh if your mouth is about to get wired. Oh, wow. Well. But I'm like this. One, two, and three, I'm going to reach four. Mm -hmm. Put the gun out. You'll be the first to get to run. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks they hard until the real gangsters come around. Yeah. And you think you're an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. the real shit comes around. Yeah. Now I know people that they like to talk about, they like to pitch. Mm -hmm. They step on the stage and all of a sudden their whole idea is in the ditch. Yep. They cannot tell you how they make revenue. Yep. But they like to tell you how they want to just talk that flashy shit. Oh, yeah. You want to wear suits. Mm -hmm. You want to talk all that like English shit. But on the road though, yeah. get your ideas together. Right? Find yourself a customer. Yeah. Pitch your idea to the customer. Yeah. Build your MVP. Yeah. And after that, you come and see. Damn, damn, hey, this is so you. good. Damn, you did it. Fabino, Gonna get Fazio, Adina, Wabinia, Wabino, Gonna get the Wabino, Adina, Wabinia, Adina, Wabino, Wabino, Josiah, the seven, I'm in a maze. You had a pimple. So, what I shall Josiah wear ye? Charlie, why I felt? Why I felt? What's the one comfort in your baby? But why I feel to make comfort. So right now, before I eat the food, Josiah, I would want you to look straight into the camera and you give your last words of motivation. Then you can serve me. Then I will chop. So to all the viewers, I would like to say, um, believe in yourself. Um, know that you don't know everything. That you're ready to learn everything. Right. Um, the best way to eradicate doubt is through action. So go out there and validate your visions, your ideas, and every single thing that you have. Be okay with failure and just keep grinding and you'll be okay. Yep. Be okay with failure and just keep grinding and you will definitely be okay. So please, mm -hmm. let's so, get the ball rolling. So what I have a do? surprise for you though. So that's so, no for my viewers. Oh. <laughs> what do you think you want most of my viewers, <laughs> my viewers. Today I have someone who will be joining me to taste Josiah's food, and um, it is no other person mm -hmm. than Favor, mm -hmm. who is also the operations manager for iSpace Foundation. So let's welcome. Favor! <laughs> Girl, how are you doing? I'm good. Oh, I'm happy to see you here today. So today, Josiah well, is going to be here. the only man mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. He has cooked for us and we are about to taste so what everything. I'm, I'm just going to cut it up a little bit. Okay. Right? 
And then
if you have any questions for Josiah, you can reach out to his DM on all his social media platforms. If you want to know more about iSpace Foundation and what they do, you can also check them out on all social media handles. Send them a message and this beautiful lady will definitely reply to all your DMs, right? Thank you and see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.